Hey everyone, I have got a great video for you today. I'm actually interviewing a friend of mine, Alok Karnik, about his entrepreneurial journey of where he started with zero a month to get in his first client, to then charging a high ticket price, to then get into 10K a month, to then get into 20K a month, and then teaching others of how to get to 10K a month themselves. And um, to now what he's actually focused on is taking the marketing off other business owners' plates. So I think that's a wonderful thing to accomplish um, in a relatively small amount of time. So a lot, great to have you, man. Hey guys, welcome. Um, thank you, Rob. I really appreciate being here. Um, so yeah, let's get started. You know, what do you want to talk about first? Well, I think what will be quite good to know is it tell us a little bit about what it is, you know, you're currently doing now, and then maybe we could check out like the full backstory and how it's led to that. Perfect. So what I currently do is I take um, coaches, consultants, service providers with verified offers. So what that means is they've made some sales, they have a proof of concept, and I take the marketing completely off their plate. So it's a done for you marketing service. And instead of charging a kind of high ticket price, I just do a revenue share with them. So it's all performance based. Um, you know, I'll get into that later, but the reason I do it kind of this way is, you know, let's backtrack, you know, four years ago when I first entered the coaching world, I was in a nine to five job. Um, I was doing project management data anal an analysis and I really just hated going to work, okay? I hated, and I'm sure many of, of you guys that are watching this are in the exact same position. You're in a nine to five job, but you hate going into work. You know, I didn't like taking instructions from somebody I felt knew much less than me, but more than that, I just wanted to create my own life and my own destiny, so to speak. So. I got this ad, it was called Consulting Accelerator. I did this course and I went through it and I kind of realized um, I want to focus on mindset, okay? That was the initial thought in my mind, okay? No idea how to pick a niche, no idea about, uh, you know, market, supply, demand, no idea about anything. I was very selfish at that point and I said, I just want to teach mindset, so this is the first mistake many, many business owners make, you know, when they're starting out, especially if they've never run a business before. They start a business to serve their own personal needs, and then they think of the customer second. Okay, so I was like, oh, I'm going to teach you like yoga, and I'm going to teach you mindset. But really, it was just me trying to serve my own needs and figure out my own bullshit that I needed to work through. So that's the first mistake I did. So if you're watching this, I hope you're going to cut many, many years off your learning curve because I, I, I wasted a lot of time trying to market things people didn't want. So that's the first mistake I made is marketing things people don't want. Um, let's fast forward. I kind of got enlightened. You could call it like that. And I realized selling mindset services is very, very difficult because not many people understand what it means. And the other thing is you're not really serving, you're not really uh, solving a problem, okay? Like what does mindset mean? It's not defined, okay? So the first thing I learned is I need to define the problem I'm gonna solve for if I wanna make any serious kind of cash. So the first client I actually, you know, sold um, I started out high ticket. So that's one thing I did do well was I never said I'm going to sell my services for a couple hundred bucks and like work my way up. I did realize if I wanted to actually have a business and survive and grow, I needed to offer something so valuable that it's a no brainer. So this is a second point I want to get to. If you want to survive in business, if you want to thrive and do well in business, you have to, have to, have to sell things people i like how alex harmozy says it sell things people can feel stupid saying no to the way i say it is you want to sell something where the number of people you can say no to increases every day and the number of people that can say no to you decreases every day okay so what does that mean in like a real world example um last week um i had probably 15 calls 
you know, booked, right? Serious calls, not like people that were kind of interested, like 15 booked calls. So I get to pick who do I want to work with? It's my decision. You know, if I just don't like somebody, if I just am not feeling like, you know, I want to work with them, I can just say no, because I know I've got a full stack of leads coming in that I would be able to find the best people to work with. So that's what I mean when I say you want to find an offer that's so good that the number of people that can say no to you is lower and lower every day. And the number of people you can say no to increases every day. Okay, so you can be more selective and that way you can, you know, create the best delivery. But so that's the second thing was I figured out that in order to really do well in business, I needed to have something people really, really needed, like desperately needed, not just kind of want. So that was the second thing. Okay. Um, and I, I think I charged $5,000 for my first coaching program and I helped uh, a woman really great, um, you know, get more sales with, uh, with the mindset kind of I developed, but I, I focused it on a specific defined problem. So that's kind of how I started. Hmm. And like, what was the, what was going on to make you realize that, um, you know, that the offer was potentially wrong and that you weren't focusing on like a problem. What was happening there? What was the incongruency? That's a great question. Usually what it looks like. Um, so for me specifically, what was happening was I was doing a bunch of Facebook lives. I was creating a lot of content as many of you probably are doing, but nobody was interested in it. I was saying like, Hey, send me a DM, you know, common mistake. Don't do that by the way. Um, nobody was hooking onto it. So I realized it wasn't that, um, or if there was somebody that was interested, it was somebody I would not be interested in working with because they had no money. Right. So it was either people I was attracting had no money. They were just kind of like, uh, you know, people I don't want to work with or the people I was interested in working with, they had no intention of working with me. Cause they're like, what, what the, you know, what is this? Like, no, go away. So that was the thing. So I really went inward and I said, what do I need to do to make this happen? And I, it just came down to this for everybody that's watching. You have to find and focus on a painful problem. Okay. It's not a painful problem for you. You have to find a painful problem in the market and ideally a market that's growing, right? So you don't want to focus on a shrinking market. That's another mistake a lot of people make, or it's, it's like too niche, right? Um, you know, you don't want to focus on like barracuda, uh, you know, telepathic, whatever, or shamans, you know, <laughs> it's just like, there's going to be like five people in the world that do something like that. So you want to find a market where the people are condensed together and you want to focus on a real painful problem that nobody else is addressing. See, and this is a thing that really, I feel help me, um, break through, uh, you know, that 10 K a month, you know, barrier. Um, the way I would approach my lead generation was I wouldn't go and try to make a bunch of posts. I would, I just focus on the most simple, efficient way to get clients. And that was just looking for problems. People were already talking about in the market, right? If you're on LinkedIn, if you're on Facebook, if you're on Instagram, you will see people have questions and you have to sift through them a little bit, but this is a great way to get started. Just find people who have problems and are raising their hand and just go talk to them and see if you can figure out exactly what their problem is. So that's what I did to break that 10 K barrier. I just went out and looked for people with problems and I didn't have a service per se. I didn't have anything built out, but I just went and questioned and I got, and I dug and I dug and I dug. And that's actually the process that I use today because I know it works so well. It's a research focused methodology where I, instead of trying to build something like what most people do, like what I did in the beginning, I just try to figure out what the main problem is and how I can solve it in the most efficient, most valuable way for the client. So that's what I did. And then I, I, I think I signed up my first client, maybe uh, two, I don't remember. I'm really bad with dates, but I remember in October, I find, I signed my first, or no, ju ju June, July, Jul 
whatever. I signed my first client a couple of months later, I signed my next three or four clients. So I broke through that 10 K barrier. Oh, pretty um, quickly. That was, that was pretty quick, like quick yeah, session from was, first to 10 K. Yeah. It was first, my first month I did five K I took two months off because I was getting the delivery locked and I was like, I'm not taking on any clients. I just want to serve this client, make sure she gets the best results. Mm -hmm. So I, I turned off my lead gen for two months and then I turned it back on. And with this new mind, that's new vision for looking for problems. I signed up like three or four clients in, in the span of like 45 days. I think, I think I did, um, 10 K in two weeks or something like that. So it was a very, very like kind of rapid. It was like, I turned a light on because now I could see the process of, okay, this is how you get clients. So I did that and, you know, I had some kind of issues with, you know, the service delivery. I was seeing that some certain clients weren't as invested. They just didn't want to, you know, take action. I was like, oh, I was getting like really, really bummed out. I was like, why are these people not taking action? Like, why is their mindset like so, so poor? So then my next challenge was like, okay, well, how do I deal with people that, um, you know, they don't want to like follow the steps? And I kind of quickly realized, well, this is a qualification problem. You know, even if I have the greatest offer, if I don't qualify people properly, and make sure that they're going to be, you know, committed to getting the result. I can have the best program in the world, but it's not going to do jack if the person doesn't want to go through it. So that was kind of the next issue I faced was like, okay, I was getting sales, but I wasn't happy enough with the type of clients I was working with. And after that, I, I, I started, or does, do you have questions around that part so far? Yeah, I suppose my question would be, um, how, like, are these, you know, when you're qualifying people, are you looking for something specific or is it a case that you, you're finding this out about them on the phone? Because I've actually been there as well. Mm -hmm. So what I do now, what I've learned is at every step of the process, you know, you're going to add value to them through that lead generation process, whatever that looks like for you but you're going to be adding value. But if you're noticing you're adding a disproportionate amount of effort to get them to respond a little bit, that's my first like warning signal. And I'll just cut it off now. So it's going to be a direct reflection of what the actual kind of, you know, interaction looks like in, in, in the work together. So I know if what I'm providing, if they're just not resonating with it, if it's not like, Oh my God, take my money type of thing then because we, you know, because we set our business up in, you know, charging high ticket, because we're focusing on lower volumes, we can be more selective with who we work with, right? So what I learned is um, focus on, you know, qualifying people early on. So you just put your energy into the most like aligned, committed type of in individuals. And it's made business way, way, way more fun and definitely more profitable. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think there's a certain change in like mentality you have on, you know, your journey as a business owner, where you go from like trying to, oh, I need clients. I need clients. Uh, you know, I need, I have that needy, needy, needy mindset, that scarcity mindset um, to suddenly being like, this person's probably not an ideal fit for, for my service, or, you know, maybe they, maybe it's not a great, maybe it is a good fit for them, but maybe we know that they won't do the work. Can you talk a little bit about how that journey from zero to, you know, getting that first client can kind of open those doors in your brain a little bit and turn the lights on? So what I would say for anybody that's working on their first client is absolutely focus on the problem. And the best way I can draw an analogy is in math. Okay. So in math class, I'm sure everybody here has taken math. Um, you know, if you don't really understand the problem fully, you'll go and you'll start like doing shit and then you'll get to the end of the problem and you'll be like, oh shit, I totally like messed this thing up. And then you have to erase the whole goddamn thing and then do it all over again. And if you just spent a little extra time, just completely making sure you understand the problem, 
like draw out all the variables, figure out the current situation, figure, like break the problem down to its very bare components, right? That makes the whole process of writing out the solution a breeze. Like if you understand the problem inside and out, it makes making a solution super, super easy. It's so easy. But that's a thing that I myself uh, and most people that probably aren't at 10K a month are forgetting is they're not focused enough on the problem. They're just so focused on what their solution is and you know what they think is the right thing that they're not completely solving the problem. And that's the biggest shift that I have realized you know, from a person who is a entrepreneur, somebody that's actually generating like serious cash is you have to really fully understand the problem and you want to understand it better than anybody else, to be honest, because when you get to that level of clarity, you don't really have to look for clients. They will come to you because they see that you have the best solution on the market. Mm. And how would you say you go about focusing on the problem for those people who are like, because I, you know, I, I've seen it myself. I've had a, a lot of people come to me who've been like, Rob, I've built this course. I've spent months doing it. I'm posting every day to social media, but nobody wants it. And for me, that's heartbreaking to see because I understand the pain these people have been through. So how would you go about you know, focusing on the problem? How would you switch that thinking to actually analyzing the problem and, and packaging that, you know, your solution around that? Yeah, so I have a specific process that I now take everybody through that I use myself to this day. Um, it's a research methodology and it's focused on asking really, really great questions, very specific questions that uncover specific pain points and I, I made a, I made like a little YouTube video. Um, it's on my Facebook, but maybe I can get that uploaded to you or something and then you can yeah. share it. But essentially, when you ask really, really, really good questions, people's pains come up and you get to access a deeper level um, of their like being than if you just ask general generic questions. Okay, so when you ask really, really pointed, specific questions with great energy behind it, you are going to unlock like the deepest pains that somebody is going through. And what that's going to do, it's allow you to build a better solution because you understand them better than everybody else does. So once you go through this kind of research methodology, you get to the specific pain points much faster. And then what I teach is, well, after you get to this point, you want to start to use, not use, but like co-create a solution with them. So instead of you trying to come up with it in your mind, you're just surveying the market to build the best solution because that's what most people want. They're just like, why does nobody get what I want? You know, that's what most people are thinking. You know, as a consumer, that's what I'm thinking all the time. Like, why does nobody have this and if i see somebody has it and if i see somebody oh my god they actually thought of me and they built exactly what i wanted i'm gonna be literally throwing money at them because i can't it's a it's like a physiological urge i can't not do it and that's the process i teach is when you get to that point where you are deriving solutions from the market themselves people are gonna throw money at you like literally like now you know a couple couple of days ago, you know, I, I don't do any kind of like whatever or Stripe or anything. I just give them my bank details because I know they're going to send it to me. You know, there's like no, there's no like high pressure sales tactics or worry. It's just like, here, here's my bank account, send it to me. And they're like, okay, like, okay, let me send it to you. Because <laughs> the solution is so good that they know without it, their life's going to, you know, suck compared to with the solution. So that's the point we want to get to is we want to be so good at the market research and understanding what we're trying to build and identifying the market that people have no really other recourse other than to pay you because they see that without paying you, their life is going to suck. Mm. Mm. I absolutely love that, you know, and I think like to people who are starting out, um, who are in that daily grind, because I see it, you know, 
I like protest against this in all my content, but like on LinkedIn, there's so many people who engage. They set themselves a KPI each day, a target of engaging with 50 different people's posts, right? Mm. They set themselves a target of making three pieces of content a day. What well, they don't understand, and like to them, uh, when they've got an offer, which is so on point, because you've asked the specific questions, they don't realize like the grind isn't that, you know, you don't have to do that. Like once it, you, once you've got something like that, like you were just saying that you just, you just give your bank details to people and yeah. they're like, so willing to jump on board. They're excited to do that. Right. Exactly. And I think that's something that people miss. Like when, if it's a problem you're solving, which is, you know, so painful and will, will improve that person's life to a, a great extent if that problem starts to get solved that, I mean, that's a great offer right there. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's not just like, you know, you target exactly what their problem is. You also want to make the offer as good as possible for them. And, you know, it's, it's not something I'm going to go like super deep into, um, you know, right now, but you want to make the kind of process of, you know, investing as easy as possible. Like you want that to be like a obvious no brainer and it's called like a risk reversal. Sometimes there's all these words to it, but simply it's just like, how easy is it to buy the thing? Right. If you're like, it's $10 million, it could be the best no brainer offer in the world, but you know, it's going to be a very, very few people that are going to be like, okay, like, yes, this is going to be a, a go for me. So it's about kind of making that value proposition. So so like flopped right so like crazy that you know they literally can't say no so there's so much involved in it you know they're getting the price right understanding like what the current situation like okay for example if you're working with people who have never built a business before right you you can't charge them like thirty thousand dollars even if it's like the best most comprehensive program you're gonna have a lot of friction getting them into the program because it just doesn't make sense so you want to figure out how can you make this actually the most valuable thing? Maybe it's something like, you know, a, um, a payment plan type thing. So instead of being like, hey, it's $30,000, it's just, hey, it's just 500 bucks a month. You know, you're going to get access to everything and then you get monthly coaching sessions. And then as you go through these checkpoints, you know, we unlock higher level stuff for you or something like that. So you want to really think about like, what's their actual situation? Like if the guy only has like a thousand extra bucks to spend, you, you're not going to sell them on a $30,000 thing. Mm -hmm. So it's also thinking about, um, you know, their situation, like their financial situation, their time situation, just fully understanding your market, like in and out. That's another aspect of getting like a ridiculous offer. Mm. Amazing. So Let's go back to your story. So you were, sure. you were, you, you know, you broke that five figure a month mark. Mm -hmm. um, what did you like, did things just go swimmingly from there? Was there any, you know, challenges from there? Tell me about, let, let's talk about that. Absolutely. So, you know, when I started out, um, I was like, oh, 10 K a month, like that's six figures. That's going to change my life. And when I actually hit that, I was like, oh, this kind of sucks. Like, I want something way better than what I've been sold. <laughs> so for me, after that, it, I really quickly realized like, okay, um, you know, 10K a month is like, it's it's better than I, where I was, but it's nowhere near what I really want. So what I realized was, and this is what you guys are going to realize too, right? It's like, you're not really after 10K a month. You're after a lifestyle. You're after a way of living. And that's what I realized was if I want to really live the way I want to, um, kind of following all these people that are like, you know, scale up and do this and do that. It's not going to make me happy. It's not going to be what I want. I want a business that's so like efficient that it's just printing me money. That's kind of what I want. Right. So what I realized was if I go about doing what I did to get to 10 K, you know, doing more of that, it's just going to burn me out and frustrate me. So the next thing I did was I started figuring out how to like automate, like my lead generation. So I started writing like email sequences and I started like testing what I called automated organic, 
which was essentially making like really, really pointed videos speaking specifically to, you know, individuals' problems. And then I would just like kind of post them or not even post them. So what I did was I would make a post, like a written post on Facebook. I would say like, you know, this is problem, like talk about it. And then, you know, what the future could look like for them. And I said, Hey, if you're interested, I said, like, break me out. That was like my call to action. So I was like, Hey, comment this. So it's, it's called a two step, um, you know, not to get all caught up in terms, but clearly pointing out, you know, what the problem is and then offering them a solution. So if they commented, then I would just send them a video I pre-recorded and, you know, they would watch the video and at the end of it, they would book a call. So I got like four people, you know, in this kind of sequence and I did a group program with them. So I was like, you know, trying to literally get my time back at this point. So I did another offer. It was like a group program. Um, four of them joined, um, you know, they all kind of got great results and um, I probably should have charged more. So I kind of figured out this marketing mechanism of how do I get people, you know, into a program. But again, it was like the delivery was really like kind of pissing me off. I was like, you know, to do the marketing, to do like all this work, to do sales calls and then deliver, man, this is like, this is so much work. I hate doing this. So I was back to that problem again of like lifestyle. It's like, how do I actually, you know, make like literally print money, solve a super valuable problem and not just get killed on like running the business. So, you know, I, I started thinking about it. I was like, why am I just following what every other person in this market is doing. Why am I hustling for the same group of clients saying the same exact thing, offering the same thing? It's so commodified, I realized. You know, um, you know, I, I made that bad business DMs in real life video where I actually would like, you know, go out to people in, in the street and I would say like, hey, how's your business going? Because I was just so frustrated by all these messages I was getting, you know, people saying like, hey, how's business going? Hey, how's business going? So I noticed a pattern that was happening in the market. I noticed everybody's actually commodifying into hit 10K a month. Like everybody was teaching this. And I was like, you know, I'm out of here. I want to do something different. I want to switch, switch it up and actually enjoy the process of business. Um, so that's when I came up with this partnership model where I partner up with people who have really, really cool offers, but they're just, you know, flooded with the marketing it's like you know they're trying to do the delivery they're trying to do the marketing they're trying to build a team they're trying to do everything and it's just like overwhelming them i was like let me take this shit off their plate like let me just fully handle marketing because i have a good grasp on it right and let me do it at a you know with an offer that's just like you cannot say no it's like you know it's pay for performance purely so i'm you're not gonna have to pay me unless i get you results and that's where I came up with my current business, which is doing that, um, which is a partnership model. Yeah. For anyone watching this video right now, I just want you to pause the video and answer me this. Where do you think this business idea that Alok has just had has come from? It's come from the market. Again, it's not come from like a problem he's created. You know, it's not something that he's imagined, right? It's a genuine problem and he's experienced this with people as well. And a great business is always built from the market and we focus the solution around the problem. We don't build the solution first, right? And then look for a problem. It just, it just doesn't work like that. So I want yeah. you to pay, pay attention to these, these bits that, you know, Locke is saying right now. You know, and it, it did, you know, it came from actual research. It came from getting on calls with people and having, hearing the same thing over and over. It's like, yeah, your coaching program, it sounds like every other person. Like, how is it different? And that's when it clicked for me. I was like, dude, you're right. Like, why would my coaching program be any different than another coaching program? And at the end of the day, it would just be me selling myself and it would be me selling my time and I'd be wound up in the exact same situation. When all these people are like raising their hands and they're like shouting, oh my God, help, help me, you know, fix my marketing. Like, you know, help me take this load off my plate. And once I switched, it was like literally like a floodgate open. And it's just like all these calls, just like so much interest, like coming in. 
And um, yeah, it just made the whole process a lot more efficient. Mm. That's that's amazing. Um, so in t- so this is where you kind of you're, you're at right now. You know, you're building this out. You're you're uh, generating more sort of partnerships and things like this. What throughout your journey, you know, what were the biggest shifts for you in terms of what was mentally going on? Because I noticed that there's a, there's a key difference from people who are you know running that ten. Um, I was about to say ten figure a month which is ridiculous. <laughs> so, uh, so like five figure a month business versus the people who are like starting out. What were the, what were the biggest shifts for you that have happened over that time? Yeah. I mean, I would love to run a 10 figure a month business, but <laughs> me and you both, man, <laughs> you know, um, biggest shift, you know, once again, it's focusing on not you and what you want, but like actually getting to the people's hearts and understanding what they want. It's, it's almost like people ignore the most obvious thing. That's what I realized is like, people will literally tell you exactly what they want, but you'll ignore it and you'll be like, so obsessed with your solution. So that was the first thing is just to turn, you know, turn off your brain and start listening that's that's what I call, you know, in my heart method, hearing. So we have to start with hearing, empathy, and attention. If you don't have hearing, empathy, and attention, you're going to miss whatever is going on underneath, you know, your prospects, you know, external. Like you want to connect with their energy. You want to actually be there. You want to provide presence. You don't want to just, honestly, you want to come without any solution. That's the best way to go into the market is go completely empty. You know, that kind of entrepreneur who has no agenda and just wants to make money and solve problems, they're going to do the best because they're not trying to build something and they're not trying to, you know, shove a thing down their throat. They're just like, yeah, let me talk to you. No expectation. Let me learn. And let's, you know, not even let's see if we can build a solution, but you're just going in to listen and understand. That's the best way to go in. I think, you know, it's a key point right there. Um, so I don't know if I ever told you this, but, um, early on, I was looking to get more clients for occupational psychologists. And Mm -hmm. the only reason why I was looking to get more clients for occupational psychologists is because I liked what, what they did. Right. So I actually saved myself a bunch of time by taking these guys out, you know, for coffee, by phoning them, um, by having calls with them about what their biggest problems were. And after like 20 interactions with people. I actually learned that they don't, they're actually highly sought after. They don't need more clients, but what their biggest problem is, um, was that when they go into organizations to motivate the teams and to change all like the HR stuff, their biggest problems is the bosses and the CEO is looking at it like a box ticking exercise rather than actually wanting change. Um, and that was a problem I couldn't, couldn't help with, right? I could help getting them more clients, but I actually saved myself a whole bunch of time rather than like creating a course. Um, so, you know, you're absolutely right. It starts at like the market there, because if you don't, it, you know, it's, it's really tough, right? Yeah. So what was the problem exactly? Like the CEOs saw. Yeah. So, so, so like people hire occupational psychologists for basically like maybe if, if their workforce are not very motivated, Maybe if like the, you know, the managers aren't very motivated and the occupational psychologist will come into the organization and they'll be like, right, we, we should change this around. We should do these. Here's all my suggestions to improve your environment. Mm -hmm. And what would happen was they'd go in, um, and either the CEOs, this was like, it was, wasn't every case, but it was like a large proportion of the cases, the CEOs would just nod along and not do Mm -hmm. anything about it. Uh, or they would get mega defensive and be like, no, we don't, you know, that's not how we do things. That's not, even though they've hired them. Um, mm, so that was their mm. biggest problem, which was, you know, I, I would have never known that by guessing. Right. Um, so it's, it's kind of like the, the questions that come up to my mind are like, okay, well, how could the occupational co- you know, get more compliance with the CEO, Yeah, right? That would be like a question I would ask, like the occupational person. And I would probably want to have an interview with the CEOs. That's honestly who I would want to target and ask them like, you know, like why, why are, why are you not doing what, 
And then maybe like the CEO is like, well, you know, we really, I don't even want to hire these guys. It's just like HR person's making me do it. So, yeah. so you, un- you start to uncover problems, right? Like this mm. is the beauty of, you know, being really research focused is you start to uncover problems and then you finally get to that one root problem, mm. right? What most people do is they focus too much on the surface issues and they never get to the root, root, root problem. When you can get to that problem, like that's when you have like money, like ready to go. That's like when you have like literally you can print money. Um, mm. So that's that's like, yeah, that's my goal is always to try to get to the most essential fundamental problem um, and then solve it. I love that, man. I love that. So how has life changed for you, you know, being kind of in this situation where, you know, you didn't really know what you wanted to do. You knew you had a problem with like your offer to where you are right now. Yeah, there's kind of like, you know, a couple of phases. So the first phase was that entrepreneur, um, you know, totally selfish, you know, only want to work on what I want to work on, um, trying to sell you know, I wouldn't say I was at that point where I was trying to sell anything, but I was very like, you know, I just want to sell what I want to sell. Uh, so, you know, described by, you know, fear, trying to constantly chase after people, um, you know, very like greedy kind of needy mindset. Then the next phase was kind of you're making money, but you're still taking on clients you shouldn't probably be taking on. You're not qualifying well enough. So that's like when you have, you're solving problems, you're solving significant problems, but your lifestyle isn't really where you want it to be because you're still exchanging, you're still putting in a lot of effort to acquire clients. You're still kind of, um, you don't have the best delivery yet because you're taking on clients that, um, you know, you should have disqualified earlier in the process. So it's a lot of work to get them the results. Um, and, and then now kind of where I'm at is, uh, you know, another phase of enlightenment, which is, um, you could call it like the offer is dialed in, the mechanisms are dialed in, you, you understand, you, you understand more of the subtlety of what makes people buy and you really, really get like what it is people are paying you for. And once you really start to understand, like, why is this person giving me this money? that's when it becomes a lot easier. So right now where I'm at is like, I don't really have to worry ever about how, how booked or full my pipeline is. I know like literally I have people texting me and saying like, Hey, are you open to working with this client? You know, I just got a text last night. So it's like, people see you as the go-to person, you know, they know you've got serious value. So you're not really worried about, you know, where am I going to get the next client? You know, you're going to be able to get clients, you know, you're going to be able to serve them well. Now I feel like it's about like operational efficiency, you know, um, building a team out and like, you know, serving more clients and like handling that influx of clients and, um, you know, maybe raising your rates and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, you know, like you've got this like kind of active moving mechanism and you're kind of like trying to tweak it as it's moving. So that's kind of, this is the fun part, I feel like. So I just wanted to drill down on something you just said there. How important is it to be um, in that abundance mentality, knowing that you, if you've got your offer right, people come to you versus that scarcity mentality? I think you need to do it all the time, 24-7 from day one. You know, even if you have zero clients, you should not ever be in a rush. Not a rush, but you should never feel like a neediness to sign up a client. That's one thing I've definitely learned is that it's always going to backfire if you're trying to put in, um, or we could say it like you're not aligned, right? Um, it's always going to backfire in, a, in a, one way or the other. If you get the money, it's going to be a lot of stress and work, or if, if, you know, if you don't get the money, it's going to be like this neediness in you. So you always want to be in that abundant mindset because that's going to allow you to A, pinpoint exactly the best clients to work with. B, it's going to actually make you in the mindset of qualifying them really, really well. So you know, like 99%, you're going to be able to get them that end result. So I would say always be in that abundant mindset, because if you can really target a specific, if you're in that abundant mindset, you're going to be able to solve people's problems and you're going to do it well. Love it. Absolutely love it.
And um, so what is, you know, if I was to ask you, there's a business owner out there right now, they're watching this, they're like, oh man, you know, I used to be where he used to be. Uh, what, what's your biggest tip for them? Well, I would say number one is don't go into the market with a scarcity mindset of like needing to get clients. Go into the market empty and look to see what problems exist. What are the most valuable problems and what should you focus your time and effort on solving? Now, if there is multiple, you know, equally good looking problems, that means that you haven't really identified the most valuable one. So I would say go back and re-identify what's the most valuable problem. And, you know, that comes down to your experience and your skill set too. You know, you know, um, I have a strong background in science and research. So of course, you know, using a research-based me based methodology is the problem I'm going to be best at solving. And it's going to be the most valuable problem. You know, if you're like a swimming expert, the problem that's going to be most valuable solving for you is going to be different. So obviously it's going to come with that caveat of there's no like objective, like most valuable problem. It's going to be always a synthesis of your skill set and what you see and, you know, the opportunity you identify, but always find that most valuable problem. Um, other than that, I would say, you know, um, get, you know, don't get too caught up with uh, systems and strategies and shit like that. Um, you don't need a fancy system. You don't need like any kind of website or anything you just need to solve problems and that's what you're getting paid for at the end of the day um yeah so that's all i would say amazing man i love that and for the people who are interested in learning more about what you do um where can they find you where can they find more out about you yeah that's a great question um easiest way would be just you know Add me a friend on Facebook, follow my Instagram. Um, Rob, I'll send you those links. You can pop them in the comments. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn. So just reach out to me. And, you know, if you have a question, um, we'll just start trying to figure out what that problem you're trying to solve is. Dude, it's been a pleasure doing this with you. And I absolutely love your take on things. I know you're putting a lot of value out there in the world at the moment. And um, keep doing what you're doing. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.